At the end of July, land managers from Minnesota and members of the Seeing the Forest and the Trees study group toured forests in north central Minnesota managed by the Aiken County Land Department. The tour included a review of intermediate treatments in different forest types, including pine, aspen, and hardwood stands. Intermediate treatments include management activities such as thinning that occur during the life of a forest stand and can help meet diverse management objectives, including increased productivity. The first stop of the tour was a Norway pine thinning. The forester and the operators explained the importance of using the right equipment to protect the residual stand and the crop trees that are being given more room to grow by the thinning operation. The thinning harvest includes removing about 10 cords of wood per acre, and it is a 50-acre treatment area. The income to the land department is $220 per acre. The tour participants could view firsthand the thinning operation. The next stop on the tour was an aspen thinning. About five cords per acre were removed from the 13-acre stand with an income of $58 per acre. At this site, the group discussed the benefits of intermediate treatments in aspen and how the county is monitoring the results. One of the things that, that we've tried to do in looking at this and looking at that resource is say, okay, what are our objectives for the aspen thinning, whether it be um, on a certain site where we want to get uh, conifer understory development or where, where we have an objective where we want to um, produce more saw logs but just not um, we're going to thin all of the aspen that we have because we, we can't do it a lot of it isn't accessible a lot of it isn't going to respond that well um, so so I think what we're trying to do is say these are the sites that we're really going to focus these uh, intermediate aspen thins on and, and about six or seven years ago we started an, an oak project to look at oak thinning. We're going to look at that this afternoon, or one of them. Um, they were pleased with where we went with that, so then we got into northern hardwoods, and most recently this spring, um, we did some baseline data on, um, on aspen thinnings. And I'll just read to you, and maybe Tony and Brian can weigh in, because you guys are research guys, but here's, we had three hypotheses. Um, which we were testing with thinned and unthinned aspen sites. Is there a correlation between the increased size class growth and intermediate thinning in aspen stands on similar quality sites? If so, how much increase may be expected and how might this affect rotation ages? That's a hypothesis one. Hypothesis two, how does the thinning of middle age aspen impact biomass levels, wind throw, and disease incident on the sites? And three, is there a correlation between the development of regeneration in the understory of aspen stands and thinning operations? If so, which species seem to be favored? So that's what we wanted to take a look at. We, we set up a design, we had meetings. Um, we just finished our baseline work in, um, up in the northern part of the state, which is where Dan is the district forester, on two sites. Um, what we, we did a literature review, and one of the things that the literature suggests is if you're going to be thinning aspen, concentrate on better sites. There, 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 there is uh, evidence out there that if you're thinning aspen on not very good sites, um, you don't really make, you, you, you don't really see the increases. That it's not really worth the effort, shall we say? Another thing uh, that, that's come out from the research, from the literature, is that um, in addition to better quality sites, is um, don't start too young. Um, start thinning um, when, the, when the stands in our area, when they get sort of in the 30, 30 years, 35 years. So start thinning 30 to 40. So we, we set those sidebars. Do you know the reason for that? The well, the studies, and there, there's more work that's been done in Canada, actually, mm -hmm. and the Canadian work indicated that um, basically if you were doing pre-commercial work in, say, 10-year-old stands or 15-year-old stands, um, there was the, the economics just wasn't there, mm -hmm. so it was it was it, a lot of it had to do with economics. Okay. 
So that's those are these are the things we're looking at. What did we what have we found? Well, we've only just started, so it's early. Um, not surprisingly, we found that on the sites that were thinned, the diameters were larger than the sites that were not thinned. Um, and the higher your site index, the, 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 the more the growth was. And if anyone's interested in the details, um, I, I have a, uh, I, can, I can send you, I can email you, a, if it's all right with Mark, um, a, a copy of our small field. The third stop of the morning was another Norway pine stand. But unlike the first one, this stand has been thinned three times. The stand is now 50 years old, and the trees average 11 and a half inches in diameter. The group discussed some of the concerns about needing to find markets for high quality saw logs produced from these treatments, and the value of engaging the industry in developing these opportunities. At lunchtime, the tour reviewed the results of a survey of land managers in Minnesota. So this was a real informal survey that was um, uh, extended to most of the Minnesota Forest Resource Partnership members, which includes the feds and the counties, private, state. Um, and this, this is their responses. And you might get kind of a, um, I don't want to say a kick out of it, but enjoy reading the individual comments uh, the last few pages about why they're using intermediate treatments and, and more likely why they are not. The first stop of the afternoon included a mixed pine stand offering the group the opportunity to view a second thinning in the uh, operation that included the objective of creating openings for white pine regeneration. About nine cords were cut per acre in the 2008 harvest with an income of $172 per acre. The group moved on to hardwood management with a visit to a red oak thinning. The stand is 81 years old and is marked for its third thinning in 2009. The first thinning in 1987 was for firewood and provided $18 per acre. The second thinning in 95 provided $65 an acre, and this year's thinning will provide $359 per acre and includes high quality products. So we're on a, we're on a, we're on a line here actually. This, this area has been thinned twice, and when you get over here, it's only been thinned once. Um, what years was the, the first thinning here was 87. 87. They were light thinning, so 87 and then 95. So some of the fears at first were you don't want to thin it too much because you might get upper cormic branching, you might damage the trees, you might let it too much light. So I think the tendency for, for all of us as we got our feet wet was to thin it lightly. Um, so this has had two thinnings and this has had one thinning. What we found in our and surprisingly, after three years, was guess guess which site is is growing oak faster and more rapidly and has the, guess where the growth rates are higher. You would expect the growth rates would be higher on a site that they started thinning earlier on, but that isn't what happened. What's happened is because by the time um, you got, by the time Bob got to he, over to here, he was thinning a little heavier, and so the thinning here was a heavier thin. And so these trees have responded much more dramatically. And we could start to set up some plots and to get some localized data. So when a manufacturer came to us and said, well, what is your resource in Aiken County? We can kind of give them some, some real data. And that's, that's what kind of... The final stop of the day was an oak shelter wood treatment. The harvest was designed to encourage red oak, basswood, and birch regeneration. It corresponded with an excellent acorn and birch seed crop in 2008. The income was $137 per acre. There are now nearly 2,000 red oak seedlings per acre, more than 5,000 birch seedlings per acre, and basswood and white pine seedlings are present as well. There are several takeaway messages from the tour. Minnesota's land managers are using intermediate treatments to meet management objectives, and their experiences illustrate the opportunities to increase productivity. Intermediate treatments can be applied in pine, aspen, hardwood, and mixed species cover types, but they need to be aligned with market demands. Intermediate treatments can meet objectives for timber products, wildlife, recreation, and other ecosystem benefits and services. Education, funding, and policy support are needed to support the expanded use of intermediate treatments. For more information, please see the Intermediate Treatments Report available from Dovetail Partners. This tour was supported by the Forest Guild, the Blandon Foundation, 
and the Aiken County Private Woodlands Committee.